guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be back. We're not going to be talking about this crazy hair because I've just been letting my hair do its own thing this entire month. Just, just trying to stay away from heat styling and it's, it's definitely doing its own thing. Um, but for today's video, I'm going to sit down and show you exactly how to do this look that you see right here. This is my easy, fresh, everyday look, but it has my little Valentine's Day twist on it. But before we get into the makeup, if this is a full on get ready with me, we have to talk about scent because I can never leave my house without having scent on. And today I wanna to talk about the two most romantic scents that I have in my arsenal, which are Ambery Cherry and Ambery Vanilla from Dossier. So if you've never heard of Dossier, they are a perfume brand that have high-end scented perfumes at a low affordable price. Like literally for the price of one high-end perfume, you could get about six of these. And trust me when I say the scent lasts, it smells good. I have so many of these now and I cannot get enough of them. And I chose Ambery Vanilla and Ambery Cherry as the romantic scents because Amber is just so deep and sultry and sexy. And these two scents, every time I wear them, people are always like, what are you wearing and where can I get some? I usually do Ambery Cherry during the day and Ambery Vanilla at night. Ambery Vanilla is a dupe for YSL's Black Opium. When I tell you it smells exactly like it, it smells exactly like it. I was hesitant at first. I was like, there's no way, trust me. And Ambery Cherry, I just love the kind of the juxtaposition and sense with the deepness of the amber and the lightness of the cherry. So if you're looking for something that you wanna treat yourself with or buy something for a loved one, a little Valentine's Day gift or a Galentine's Day gift, if you wanna get your hands on some Dossier perfume, the link is down below in my pers prescription box. And another thing that I love about Dossier is all of their scents are sustainably sourced. So you know me, if you know me, you know that I don't like to wear anything that's not sustainably sourced. So Dossier perfumes is definitely something that checks all those boxes for me and I feel like they will for you too. So check them out and I'm just going to put a little more on because you know, why not? And if you want to see how I got this makeup look, keep watching. So I'm coming at you with a fresh face and I've been doing a lot less makeup on the face lately. So I'm going to show you exactly what I've been doing. For Valentine's Day, I'm going to keep it light. I'm going to keep it fresh. I know sometimes for Valentine's Day you think bold and you think sultry, but I've been loving a nice, just fresh look lately and that's exactly what we're going to do. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually line my inner waterline, my upper waterline with some black liner and I'm not going to put that on camera because I get grossed out watching people do this so for the people that don't like eyes like me I'm just gonna skip through this all right back and I brought you guys in a little closer so you can actually see what I'm doing all right so I haven't been using primers lately I've been really keeping my skin hydrated with just a good skincare routine also staying hydrated also I've been drinking bone broth every morning which has been a game changer in game changer in my skin just overall health so I just feel like makeup just sits nicer on my face. So I'm gonna go in with foundation and I'm actually using a drugstore foundation. So this is the Revlon Illuminance um, Skin Caring Foundation. It's in the shade 201 Creamy Neutral and this is the one that I've been wearing every day. Absolutely love it. Um, and I'm just gonna go in with a beauty blender and start just working that into my skin. I haven't really been using many primers lately just because I don't really feel the need for a primer. Also, I did take a makeup certification course and I learned in that course that you really don't need a primer for every day. If anything, you're clogging your pores a little more. Um, obviously, you're putting product on your face, you're clogging your pores, but it's just kind of unnecessary, you know what I mean? Like that's an unnecessary step unless you are, you know, getting married and you have to have your makeup looking perfect all day or whatever it may be. I just kind of stopped wearing primer altogether and I'm focusing more on my skin health, like really staying hydrated, two liters of water a day, taking my supplements. Like I started drinking bone broth in the morning. I know, who am I? I'm in this whole healing girl era where I'm just kind of like not heat styling my hair and taking care of myself. And you know, it's actually, I don't know like it's just it feels so good but it's a lot of work it's a lot of work to do it all I feel like I really get sucked into that whole like 
Instagram real TikTok world where it's like, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing that and this and that and this and that. And it's like, oh my God, like I can hardly keep up. Like taking care of yourself becomes a part-time job and who has the time? You know what I mean? So I started like slowly implementing things into my life. So I started out with Bailey Brown Pilates and I don't force myself to do it every day. I listen to my body and I allow my body to kind of tell me what it needs. Um, and Bailey Brown Pilates have been really good for hormone balancing. If you're new here, I do have PCOS. So that is a hormonal condition. And I've honestly found that my symptoms are so much better now that I've started working with my hormones instead of against them. I was doing a lot of weight training before and I found that my body was just not responding to heavy cardio and weights and all that stuff. So Bailey Brown's Pilates like circuit, this is not sponsored whatsoever. It has been a game changer for me. All right, foundation is on and worked into the skin. So now I'm gonna start layering on a little bit of eyeshadow, a little bit of contour, all that good stuff before I put my concealer on. Cause I kind of use my concealer as an eraser. So if I go a little heavy handed with my, I'm just gonna blend out right here a little bit. If I go in a little heavy handed with my eyeshadow or something, or a little heavy handed with my contour, then the concealer kind of erases it, takes it away, you know what I mean? So that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna actually start with the eyes. And I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush. I'm cleaning it off right now. I'm gonna take a fluffy brush and I'm gonna go in with a little bit of loose translucent powder. Today I'm using the Rare Beauty um, setting powder. I don't even wanna show you guys my containers. Usually I'll, I'll show you the actual container. I haven't filmed one of these in so long that I haven't been taking that care of the actual packaging on my makeup. So it looks a little rough. So with a little bit of translucent powder, you can use any translucent powder you have. I'm just gonna kind of seal that foundation into my eyelids. That way, when I start layering on that powder, it's not gonna move around and it's not gonna crease into my eyelids. And I'm just gonna kind of pat this on. I'm not like going back and forth. I'm patting this on and I'm working it into that foundation. So it just kind of stays on and it sticks. Perfect. Now with that same brush, I'm gonna go in with eyeshadow. And I actually, again, I haven't filmed one of these in so long that I don't have an eyeshadow palette, um, like a new eyeshadow palette to show you guys. But when I did take the makeup certification course, which I will link the video down below, it was with the Online Makeup Academy, they sent me this palette, which is actually kind of a dupe for the Jaclyn Hill palette. Hang on, let me open this up. Like when I got it, I was like, or when I saw it online, I was like, oh, th this is the Jaclyn Hill palette. And then when it came, I'm like, oh, it's not. But it looks like it, right? So I'm gonna go in with this kind of taupe color over here. And you always wanna go in working lighter to darker. That way everything just kind of blends out seamlessly and looks perfect. And I'm gonna start at the outer corner of my eye and just kind of wiggle that in there just stamping and wiggling. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I like to kind of stamp my makeup on on both sides and then kind of blend a little more. That should be good. So now we blend, blend, blend. I did see, speaking of Instagram and TikTok and all the social media, that uh, 2016 is making makeup why can I not talk? 2016 makeup is making a comeback, which is when I started getting into all this like makeup world stuff, like just really absorbing all of Jaclyn Hill's content and learning how to do makeup. And it was always the like that smoky eye with like the glitter lid with the heavy, heavy um, liner. And you know, part of me still has a soft spot for that makeup look, but I don't know if I'll be fully leaning into the 2016 makeup like I was before. Who knows, who knows? Maybe the next time I come on here, it'll be like with a full glitter smoky eye and I'll be eating my words, but 
for now, we're gonna keep it light, we're gonna keep it fresh. So I'm just kind of doing windshield wiper motions and I'm not bringing this onto the lid, I'm just kind of like sticking to the outer corner, the crease kind of moving outward this way, just really building that like cat eye look, but keeping it subtle, keeping it fresh, nothing too heavy. We wanna start building the colors, so I'm gonna go in with something a little darker, probably this brown over here. So any palette that you're kind of working with, you should have like a neutral shade, a shade that's neutral to your skin type, and then a few darker shades, and then a few kind of like shades, like pops of color, and then some that are just kind of like random like oranges or like a light brown or something like that. Those are called transition shades, and I'll show you exactly how you use a transition shade in just a second. I went in a little heavy with this brown, so I'm just gonna really blend that out. Anytime you make a mistake like that, you go in heavy handed with a color, just blend. Just take a little bit of extra time, blend it with your brush, everything will be okay. You don't have to wipe all your makeup off, just blend, blend, blend. And then usually like, when I blend the shade, I like to go all the way up to my eyebrow. I like to kind of pull it out like this, just really kind of playing around with that shade, playing around with this shade and light of my face, where the light's hitting, where I want my, my eyes to kind of like, I like to draw it out because I like to kind of have that bit of a cat eye effect. Next, with that same brush, I don't like to switch brushes. I know I should, but I just kind of like, I keep a paper towel here and I clean it off. It's fine. Um, so I'm gonna go in with what I talked about earlier, a transition shade. So, in terms of my skin type, this transition shade right here um, makes the most sense. If you have a more, a richer skin tone, this one might be a transition shade for you. Um, this one over here. So a transition shade is kind of like those random shades in a palette that you're like, oh, well, why would I wanna put that on my lids? And then you're like, oh, because it helps blend things out. So I'm gonna use this shade, which I think when it was in the Jaclyn Hill palette, it was called Pukey, because it looks like puke. And I'm just gonna kind of blend those two shades together that light brown and that dark brown, and that pukey shade is gonna kinda make it all make sense. Just make it make sense. Next, I'm gonna take like a little brush like this. If you don't have a brush like this, you can always use kind of like a flat brush like this to like really get into your lash line, but I'm gonna use this guy today if you have anything similar. And I'm gonna go in with the deepest shade that I'm gonna use today, and that's gonna be this one right here, just like a nice, rich coffee color. I'm gonna tap off any excess, and then I'm gonna stick to the outer corner of my eye. I don't want this to go in too much because that's gonna close in my eyes. So I'm gonna just stamp, stamp this on the outer corner of my eye. And you know what? My face shape might not be the same as yours. You know what I mean? My eyes are not the same as yours. So play around, see what looks good on your eye shape. See what looks good on you. I honestly, when I first started getting into makeup, I would spend just hours in front of the mirror just practicing to see what looks good on me. And that's kind of why I don't like getting my makeup done. Like if I'm standing in a wedding or I whatever it might be, I don't really like getting my makeup done because I feel like I just know my face better. I'd rather do my own makeup, you know what I mean? So I kind of stamped that dark shade on my lash line just from the middle out and I'm going back with that fluffy brush and I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and really blending that out. This is kind of gonna give you a subtle liner look, which you can kind of stop right there if you want. If you don't wanna wear an eyeliner, that's gonna give you enough, enough depth on your eyes that you don't have to go any further with an eyeliner. But I like a little bit of drama, so I'm gonna go a little further with some eyeliner. So today, where did I put my eyeliner? All right, so I'm gonna go in with my eyeliner brush, which is just kind of like an angled brush, and I'm gonna go in with my eyeliner pot. So I usually use the MAC Paint Pot, but this is from the brand Inglot. So just kinda gonna go in, dip my brush, 
really just take a little bit. I don't want to do too much with this. I just want enough to give me just a tiny bit of depth, not too much. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stamp it. I'm going to get as close as possible to my lash line. And I'm just going to stamp it right in the outer corner of my lashes. So you can see it's not too much eyeliner, but you could see the difference between the two eyes. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. It looks a little sloppy right now, but you can see that one is looking a little more sultry, whereas the other one is looking a little more rounded, right? So that's the difference. This is using eyeshadow as a liner. This is using eyeliner. So you're going to have if you want that sultry effect, you're gonna use that eyeliner. If you want a softer effect, you're just gonna use some eyeshadow. So now that we have that eyeliner stamped on, I'm going in with, just take any small brush you have. I'm using a flat brush, and I'm just gonna kind of buff it out, soften up the line, wiggle it, and just kind of bring it out like you would a winged eyeliner, but not quite, you know? So you're getting that kind of cat eye, almond shape effect but not with a harsh, harsh, like Amy Winehouse wing. You know what I mean? No shade against Amy Winehouse. Love her. Have thoughts about that new movie trailer, though. Like, I'm sure the actress is going to do a phenomenal job. She looks nothing like Amy Winehouse. And Amy Winehouse had such a distinct look for them to not honor that. I feel like Lady Gaga would have done such a good job in that role. So next I'm going to go in with the Merit Contour Stick and this is in the shade Scene or Sen, like Paris. Um, anyways, so I'm just going to kind of start putting that exactly where I want my contour to be. So I'm starting kind of like halfway on the cheek, going upwards on both sides, bringing it into my forehead, Always do a nose contour because I've always been self-conscious about my nose. So just on both sides, attach it at the end. Little line right there to give me that like upturned effect. And then right from my ear to my other ear to kind of help carve out that jawline. And from there, I take the fat end of my beauty blender and just kind of blend upwards. Okay, if this video is getting choppy and weird, it's because my camera keeps overheating and I keep having to turn it off. So just sorry about that. Okay, so I am blending upwards with my contour. I don't wanna bring it in too close to the center of my face because that's gonna close my face in. Um, and I also don't wanna bring it down because that's gonna age me and make my skin sag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go upwards with this and I'm just gonna contour into the hairline. And then I'm gonna bring this side down. So I'm casting that shadow on my neck and I'm really showing off the jawline. I really like these cream contour sticks because I find that they're so much easier to work with than um, a powder contour. But I do like to go in with a powder contour afterwards just to kind of like lock everything in. So once I have that blended, I'm gonna go in and blend out the nose contour. Just being really careful with this. I never understand those girls that are able to do like contour, concealer, and blush all at the same time, and then blend it all together and not have everything go into each other. I don't know, that's like a special skill that I just can't learn but I'm always amazed watching those videos. Now I'm just gonna take a little angled brush and I'm gonna go in with my shade light palette that's seen much better days. And I'm just gonna go in with the middle shade, top, tap off the excess, and I'm just gonna kinda lock in all that contour. Again, I'm not going in too deep on the face, I'm just kinda staying on the outer corners, blending, just kinda locking in that cream, you know what I mean? Next, I'm going to go in with concealer. So this is the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer, and um, I'm not sure what shade this is in, but I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny bit. I used to put so much concealer on my face. I'm doing this much concealer for my entire face. Um, I've really changed my tune when it's, when it's come to makeup. I can't talk either. So I'm going to take my Beauty Blender, just dab it in there, what I like to do, I'll start on this side, I like to go on the inner corner of my eye and just kind of dab that in 
bring it out like this to kind of shape where I want my eyeshadow to be and then bring it down the center of my nose to carve out that contour. So see the difference? Like see how much more lifted this side looks than this side? And that's all because I took literally the tiniest dab of concealer and just kind of carved out where I want my makeup to actually be. So this is what I mean when I say playing with shade and light or shadow and light. This is exactly what you're doing. And then I'm gonna take another dab and I'm gonna start at my ear and I'm gonna like kinda dab, dab, dab all the way to the outer corner of my lip and just kinda play with that, play with the shape of what I want my lips to look like once I put my lipstick on. Anything that's left I'll usually put kind of on my forehead, bring it down to my nose, lighten up that contour. So what you're doing is you're adding the lighter parts of your makeup to the center of your face and the darker parts to the outside of your face. And then that's gonna kind of help you have that contoured look. Uh, bringing too much rich color into the center of your face will just close everything in and make you look a lot older than you are. Um, okay. So now that I've actually kind of sealed in that uh, eyeshadow with that concealer, I'm gonna take my brush and I'm not putting any more makeup on it, but I am gonna kind of buff out the lower lash line just to kind of blend everything together. I completely forgot to do my eyebrows, so we're gonna do those now. I'm just working backwards. I'm getting so... Um, I'm actually so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be doing this. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm just getting sidetracked. I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little spoolie and brush my eyebrows up as you do. I'm gonna take a drugstore eyebrow pencil. You can grab any one. I think this one was like $2. And I'm going to just kinda shape my brows. Again, this is something back in 2016, I used to use that Anastasia pomade that would just make my brows look massive. Now I just kind of want it to look natural, like that. Lifted and natural and all that good stuff. Also, my camera's about to die. I'm just a mess. And then with a little bit of brow gel, just kind of lock that in. Next, I'm gonna take some mascara. This is the Maybelline Colossal um, Mascara, and just a little bit on my lash line, not too much, or my lashes, not my lash line. Not too much, we wanna keep this fresh. I always hold my eyebrows up when I do my makeup, because, I don't know, I'm a psychopath. I don't know if anybody else does that. I'm not putting um, mascara on my lower lashes because I want that kind of like doe-eyed effect. So I'm gonna keep it like this. And then I'm gonna go in with my Rare Beauty Liquid Blush. I like to work very quickly with this because I feel like it dries very quickly. So I don't dab it on both sides. I do one side at a time and I just do a tiny little dot and pull it up around my eye, my, uh, oh my God, I forgot the word, eyebrow. And then anything that's left on my beauty blender, I actually just kind of go over the nose to give that cute little, oh, it's cold outside, you know? Next, I'm gonna go in with uh, lipstick and lately I've been using the, I got a Kylie Jenner lip kit, which I was always like, I, it's just too expensive, but man, can't argue with quality. This stuff goes on so good. I don't know what kind of crack is in this, but it is the best lipstick combo I have ever used. Forget what shade this is. It's like something Canada. I'm gonna put the names of everything in the uh, description box. But just kind of go in with the lip liner and I almost like to use the lip liner as a lipstick and then go in with my lipstick. Feel like I'm looking very pale, so I'm just gonna add a little more depth to the outer corner of my eyes with some brown shadow. 
I find that if I'm done doing my makeup and I'm like, it's just missing a little bit of something. Usually what it's missing is a little bit of color on my outer corners. So I'll kind of go in and put that in there or a little bit of blush. Next, I'm going to take a highlighting shade, so this white shade over here, and I'm just going to dab that into my inner corner just to open things up a little bit, really like make it a little more, you know, doe-eyed. I love a good doe-eyed look lately. Also, normalize using the same brush for everything because who has the time, right? And then whatever is left. I'll just kind of put on the tip of my nose, the bridge of my nose, just like that. And last but not least, I'm gonna go in with my Rare Beauty um, highlight on my upper cheekbones. Mm -mm -mm. Where's the beauty blender? I'm panicking because my thing is about to die. Where's my beauty blender? Ah! Blend that out. Look at that highlight. Oh, I love it. Oh, look at that. Mm, I love it. Blend that out. Lovely. And then for this lipstick combo, I like to just go in with a little bit of chapstick and just kind of like dab it on so my lips don't look too dry. Literally, this is it. This is my fresh everyday, like Valentine's Day slash everyday look. It's super easy to do. I've like perfected this routine so much that it takes me five minutes to do this. And yeah, it's just kind of like nice and subtle and not too much. So that is my take on a Valentine's Day look. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna spritz on a little more of my Dossier perfume because I just can't get enough of the scent. Ugh, I love it so much. Um, if you want to know more about Dossier or you want to get your hands on any of these scents, go ahead and check it out in my description box. Anyways, I love you guys so much. So happy to be back. And until the next video, I'll see you later.